Hola amigos, ¿qué tal? It's Joe here from Spain Speaks with a Spain news update. And with Christmas just around the corner, Spain is now breaking COVID-19 records. But more about that in just a moment. Firstly, a big thanks to all of the people that left comments on the last video. Lots of comments, lots of debate happening there as usual. Thanks to the people that supported the channel through a donation or by buying me a coffee or a beer. Many thanks for that. Thanks to people that bought merchandise and a big thanks to my patrons on Patreon for your ongoing support. Now, let's get into the news. And as I said, unfortunately, a few days out from Christmas and Spain is breaking COVID-19 infection records. As we can see here, Spain reports the highest number of cases in a single day of the entire pandemic with 49,823 infections. Coronavirus infections on Tuesday reached the highest number so far in the pandemic. A total of 49,823 cases have been reported in the last day, while the incidence has again shot up 86 points and occupancy in intensive care units continues to grow 15.77%. Catalonia is restoring the curfew, closing nightlife and limiting social gatherings, and more and more autonomous communities are urging to take measures to prevent transmission just a few days before Christmas. The incidence rate reached 695.38 points compared to 609.38 last Monday. The autonomous communities with the highest rate continued to be Navarra with 1,488 points, followed by the Basque Country with 1,183 positive cases per 100,000 inhabitants, and Aragon with 1,019 points. So daily coronavirus infections here in Spain basically out of control. And yesterday, as we saw in the article, reaching the highest number since the pandemic began. So the question is, which age group is being affected the most by the increase in cases? Well, COVID infection rates are soaring amongst the 20-somethings, currently the age group with the highest incidence rate. The sixth wave of COVID-19 and the arrival of the Omicron variant in Spain have accelerated infections in the population aged between 20 and 29 years, which now exceed the incidence among children under 12 years of age, the age group that since mid-September has recorded the highest number of accumulated cases, as it is the only one without authorised vaccination. According to experts, this trend is due both to the lower penetration of vaccines among 20-year-olds and to their greater degree of social interaction. The incidence in this age group on Monday, according to data published by the Ministry of Health, exceeded 854 cases per 100,000 inhabitants in the last 14 days, already above the nearly 777 cases of children under 12 who only last week could begin to be vaccinated in Spain. So COVID-19 spreading through the 20 to 29 age group like an Australian bushfire. Now we all know that Spanish politicians have been reluctant to deal with the increase in cases here in Spain, unlike its neighbour to the West, Portugal, who yesterday said that they were bringing forward and tightening restrictions against coronavirus, for example, the closure of nightlife and compulsory teleworking. The Portuguese government decided yesterday to bring forward the restrictions it had planned for January in view of the progress of the fifth wave of COVID infections and announced tougher measures for Christmas celebrations, such as the obligation to present a negative test for access to restaurants. We are entering a particularly difficult period where people tend to gather together, explained the Prime Minister Antonio Costa at a press conference on Tuesday where he presented the measures that will mark the Portuguese Christmas celebrations. The containment week of contagion that was planned for the 2nd of January will be brought forward to the 25th of December when the closure of discotheques and nightclubs and compulsory teleworking will come into effect. So the Portuguese government deciding to take the bull by the horns and try to contain contagion earlier, which, as I said, is unlike what's happening here in Spain because the central government and the 17 autonomous communities still haven't decided what they're going to do. Today, as we know, they're going to get together, have a coffee and discuss the matter, but I don't think too many things are going to change until after the 6th of January, but you never know. One autonomous community here in Spain that has decided to act on the health crisis is Catalonia, and Catalonian president Aragonés is calling for the restrictions to be extended to the whole of Spain and the return of the COVID fund. Catalonia is calling for the curfew and restrictions planned for its territory from Friday to be extended to other communities with a similar epidemic situation to ensure the success of the measures and to tackle the sixth wave of the spread of the Omicron variant of the coronavirus. The president of the Generalitat, Pere Aragonés, also asked the central government to recover the COVID funds. We will start 2022 with a pandemic, but without funds. They are absolutely essential and all the communities want them. He lamented on the eve of the Conference of Presidents to be held this Wednesday. 
The head of the Catalan executive defended that not acting would be reckless in the face of the increase in contagions and called for a joint response. Now let's have a look at a summary of the health situation in Spain and we can see that accumulated incidence rate just under the 700 mark. Hospital pressure is currently at 6.1% and there are 7,634 COVID patients hospitalised around the country and ICU pressure is now high and sitting at 15.8% and there are 1,472 COVID patients, unfortunately, in ICU. Now today, the 22nd of December, is the day of the Spanish Christmas Lottery, but a couple of drug dealers in the autonomous community of Murcia decided to set up a raffle of their own. But a Spanish drug raid thwarted raffle of Christmas narco basket. Spanish police have arrested two suspected drug dealers who were raffling off a Christmas basket containing cocaine, hashish, alcohol, and a leg of cured ham, they said on Tuesday. Officers discovered the unusual lottery when they raided a drug den allegedly operated by the two men, a Spaniard and an Argentinian, in the eastern city of Murcia, the police said in a statement, without adding when the arrest took place. On the wall, they found a list of clients taking part in two raffles to win a narco basket, one on Christmas Day and the other on Epiphany on the 6th of January, a major holiday in Spain, it added. The basket included cocaine, hashish, tobacco, cash, and even an 8-kilo cured ham, police said. So the narco basket Christmas hamper for the druggies down there in Murcia, and I bet a lot of them weren't after the drugs, but for that cured ham. Now, a lot of foreigners that have lived and worked in Spain have come to the conclusion that Spaniards don't live to work, but they work to live. But the question is, how much time does Spain spend working? A graph produced by Our World in Data, a project that shows changes in living conditions around the world, shows that Spaniards spend an average of 176 minutes a day working, just under three hours. This result can be explained by the fact that the researchers have carried out the study by counting all people of working age, that is, the population between 16 and 64 years of age, regardless of whether they are working, studying, or unemployed. In addition, the authors of the scheme have used various surveys produced by the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development to explain how each country spends its time. The results show a significant disparity in working hours between world regions. For example, China and Mexico top the table with 315 and 302 minutes respectively. Far behind are Greece, Spain, France and Italy with 187, 176, 170 and 149 minutes respectively. And if we have a look at the graph on exactly how do people spend their time, we can see the countries where people spend the most time working China, Mexico, South Korea, Austria, India, Canada, and at the other end of the scale, Belgium, Greece, Spain, France, and Italy. So according to that survey, work to live here in Spain and not the other way around. Viva España! Now let's have a look at some of the comments from previous videos. One here from John. Hi, Ola Stewart, having just discovered your great videos, and thank you. I am planning to leave Melbourne, Australia in February for Malaga. Travel around for a few months, of course, watching what's changing because of COVID. So your program is great help. Thanks again. Yeah, John, thanks for the comment. Glad you liked the videos and welcome to the community. And good luck with your trip to Spain in February. Of course, you have to take advantage of the Australian borders being open because as we know, they were closed for a long time. And there are lots of people in Australia, like yourself, that are eager to get on a plane again, travel overseas, and see what's happening in the rest of the world. So good luck. I hope all goes well with your travels down there in Malaga, and February, March, April, a fantastic time to visit that part of Spain. One here from Quinn, just cancelled my trip to Spain, was leaving on Thursday, had a layover in the UK on my way home. Too many hoops to go through, too many things that could go wrong, and if they do shut down things, wasn't really a point to go. Hope to go in summer. Yeah, Quinn, thanks for the comment and sorry to see that you have had to cancel your trip to Spain. And you're right, for some, there are just too many hoops that you have to go through. But as we have seen, the last two summers during the pandemic, the summer of 2020 and the summer of 2021, things seem to get back to normal and people are allowed to travel around. So let's hope things are not different in the summer of 2022. One here from Steve, looking forward to getting back to Spain on the 18th of February for three weeks down to Mojaca. It's a beautiful part of Spain. We have stayed there many times and love the village of Torre. Yes, Steve, thanks for the comment and what a wonderful part of Spain Alamedia is. In fact, it is now one of my favorite parts of the country after my recent visit there. I didn't make it to Mojaca, of course, because I was in the area of San Jose on the Cabo de Gata, but people tell me that the old part of Mojaca is a sight to see. So good luck with your trip and enjoy that wonderful Mediterranean weather and the fantastic fresh seafood.
One here from Jose Antonio. I didn't know Elva for baby eel. It somehow sounds to me as the one who makes elves for Christmas. Elvas are tasteless in both senses. The substitute is the same or even better. Don't buy pequeninas, no thanks. You must let them grow. From a popular commercial in Spain from the 80s that worked fairly well. Yeah, Jose Antonio, thanks for the comment. And I do remember seeing that publicity campaign that tries to put people off buying undersized fish or seafood. And it does seem that Spain has a fascination with undersized or baby food products, not only fish and seafood, but also meat products as well. And anybody who's been to Segovia and seen just how small the pigs and lambs that are consumed there are will know what I'm talking about. And these products are a delicacy for some, but an ethical question for others. So you're right, Perkinines, no thanks. One here from Baby Tales. Hey Stuart, nice camera. Mike says you've got a good driving line, mate. Positioning on the road is good. Sadly, Stu, we were all booked to come to Benidorm for Christmas, but due to the UK imposed testing regime, we deferred till Christmas 2022. Workers sadly can't afford to isolate, unable to work awaiting backlog PCR test results. Sadly, it is what it is. Enjoy your drive home and stay safe. Hasta luego. Yeah, baby tails, thanks for the comment and thanks for the compliment on my driving. I like to think that I'm a good driver, although my girlfriend would disagree. And in all the years that I've been driving here, I haven't once got a ticket. Touch wood. And sorry to see that your trip to Benidorm has been postponed until Christmas 2022. But as you said, it is what it is. And unfortunately for the Spanish tourism sector, a lot of other people also cancelling their trips to Spain. And finally, one here from Malcolm, crystal clear picks due. Good choice of GoPro. Yeah, Malcolm, thanks for the comment, and I am also impressed by the quality of the image from the GoPro. And in that first video that I uploaded yesterday, the images were crystal clear, even though they weren't in 4K. I recorded the video in 4K, I edited the video in 4K, but I forgot to change the settings, and it rendered in 1080. But the second video I published yesterday, when I spoke about my COVID-19 experience, was in 4K, so I hope you could spot the difference. On that note, I'll wrap the video up. Questions and comments, please leave them in the section below. Debate the video out as you normally do. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. I'll see you in the next one. Hasta luego.